Hey, we're Summer and Candace hanging out. This is chapter three of Shades of Light. We're kicking off week four. Week five. Week five. (laughs) Maybe we start that (laughs) That makes sense. And I think you said chapter three of Oops. Connected with. Well, there you go. Good thing. Hey, we're Summer and Candace hanging out, reading our book, Shades of Light. This is season three of the Connected Life Book Club. We're on week five, and things are getting real, real. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to dive right in. The chapters that we're looking at this week are chapters 24 through 31. That's right. So this was... Casey came back. Casey came back. The whole thing. Casey came back. So I've got to tell you, for I have been one. I was wondering this whole book, and I figured we weren't done with Casey. I figured we'd officially meet Casey. Yeah, and I dreaded it. Really? There's a lot of Casey that more than anything else in Ren, her codependent relationship with Casey is what I Mm. resonate with. That is so interesting because literally the way that she described their relationship, I was like, oh, I can't wait to meet Casey. (laughs) It seems like he gets her and she gets him and it's this great relationship. But yeah, no, I catch the codependence and Mm -hmm. everything with him actually being in Kingsbury now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this was rough. So, okay, so we'll we'll just um, let's jump into the questions, I Mm -hmm. think. Uh, We have two from the group discussion point. Now, again, just want to reiterate, for this particular book, we are following along with the published discussion guide that came with it. And at the very end of each week, there's just a couple discussion questions. And because these are so rich, we usually only pick like two to three um, to chat about. And so, uh, okay, so we'll start with a question about Casey, I suppose. So at one point, Casey is kind of being that defensive, combative. He's dark Casey at this point. Mm -hmm. He also struggles with depression and anxiety in a clinical way. And so bipolar, he is he's in his his dark face. And so Mm -hmm. when he says um, the question is, how do you respond to Casey's what kind of God question and what Mm -hmm. has shaped your answer? Now, I will say we we did search to find where Mm -hmm. this is in the book. So this is where. Well, I remember him saying it, but it was so snarky. Yeah, it was kind of. real snarky. And it was a pretty offhanded thing. So to really jump on this with a question. So he says uh, that it's not a question for me about whether there's a God. I settled that one a long time ago. No, the big question for me is what kind of God is he? Mm-hmm. And he just kind of leaves it at that. So Candace. Well, and he you? follows it up with, and you know what? That's That question's way worse. And so he, he hangs up. Right. So he obviously has like an answer to that. This wasn't a... What kind of God is he? This yeah. is a real, mm-hmm. yeah, snarky is a good word for it. Right. And uh, I appreciate her response, you know, just in like how she's kind of been contemplating a lot about who God is in her life, a descending God, a self-emptying God, a, a compassionate and humble God. Um, I think for me, he is a steadfast God. I'd say that that is the first word that comes to my mind because that's the thing that always kind of renews my faith is when I think about my actions, when I think about life and how certain things are changing and how life is moving, that God is true and steadfast in all of that and that he is never changing. And Mm -hmm. that to me is the most powerful, um, yeah, the most powerful view of God and who he is in our lives and who we are to him, really. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think my answer would be similar to that. In that, he, he, yeah, he's a patient God. He's mm. a a graceful God, but not like a ballerina. Like maybe he can dance, but you know, I'm I, sure he is. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I look, yeah, I look at my life and how much I disappoint myself, or how much I feel like I disappoint those around me, and that's always a really hard place for me to be when I'm sensing that. And so just to know that nobody knows me mm-hmm. as well as God does. Yeah. And all of the flaws, all of like the okay things. Like I, I don't know that I'm like all the great things about me, but like all the <laughs> totally decent things about me, but all of the awful things mm-hmm. about me, but also nobody loves me more than God yeah. knowing all that he knows. And so for me, that's something I'm always struck by is that even when I have very little love for myself, he loves me. Even when I doubt he loves me, even when I am questioning or wandering. He's not, and so I think mm-hmm. steadfast is uh, 
is a really good term for that. And I think for Ren, understanding God is a self-emptying God, a God that mm-hmm. understands her pain. I will say that that wasn't always where I went with picturing God as a God who, when I struggled, personally felt that with mm, me. Yeah. I think I'm like, well, he's a God who knows that I'm struggling, but not necessarily a God that felt what I was feeling. Right. Was more struggling. sympathetic and not necessarily empathetic where he's like taking on your pain just as much as you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so that through this book, and maybe it's because I don't struggle in the same ways as Ren that mm. I, I hadn't gone to that place with God. But um, I think that's a new perspective, which is equally true. And something that is new for me. Yeah, that tended to be the theme. I mean, I was kind of telling my husband about it because he hasn't been reading it. Obviously, he's not invited to the book club. (laughs) Sorry, Andrew. (laughs) (laughs) No, but um, just that like every view of God. I mean, yes, there is hope from the perspective of God can empathize with us and God is a companion in suffering. I mean, he sent Jesus to fully have the human experience and that includes suffering in a big way, you know, and she obviously dwells a lot about that as she's thinking about painting the uh, stations of the cross and all of those things. And I just don't spend much of my life contemplating that side of Jesus. Um, It gives me a lot more empathy and sympathy for people that are struggling because uh, I mean sometimes just like Jamie kind of gets frustrated with like hey we have life to live here I have other people pulling my you know my attention and at my direction and Ren is kind of the steadfast always in need Mm -hmm. kind of character that's kind of what I mean that's what her character has been throughout the whole book well and I think it's so important I would say as much as it's hard to read sometimes, it's like a book that does, like you called it a bummer book. And we've had a lot of like book club people come up to me like, oh yeah, I'm really enjoying the bummer book. (laughs) (laughs) But I think that in a way is refreshing that this is a book that does kind of dwell on the suffering because that's something Mm -hmm. I feel like we try so hard to not talk about, not dwell on, not go there. And so... To see that God is someone who who gets it is important. It's just not a way I've ever, I guess, so far ugh, had to experience mm. him as a companion in that because I haven't, I guess, gone through a lot of mm. that in my life. But I think that um, seeing God in that way is, is really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay. I want to say quick before I move on to the next question. I fully appreciated Julie stepping in last week. Not only was that a lot of fun for me to watch because I'm like, ooh, that's not me. I get to experience all this for the first time. Um, But yeah, she just had some really great insight. And obviously, I'm happy to be back. But yeah, I was really grateful that she she stepped in. Thanks, Jules. (laughs) Um, So the next question, this is, I think, just the bigger question question more open-ended is what details from the characters plural lives have stirred you this week Mm. and why you start on this one yeah yeah there's a lot I mean let's see when I think when Casey was kind of being really snappy and snarky with her it kind of I could relate more to Ren in those moments because I guess I've had um, a lot more experiences like that where it's like I am I consider myself a very loyal friend and I consider myself a very loyal person. And so when it comes to uh, maintaining relationships that are sometimes hard and I know this person is in a bad place and so I don't necessarily uh, want to be mad at them for the way that they're acting towards me. But that can be really hard to deal with. And like, I think Ren was feeling a little bit like a punching bag. And I related to her in that, Mm -hmm. um, just in some of the relationships that I've gone through and uh, friendships that I've had where it's like, I don't want to leave you. I don't want to have to feel the need to kind of like protect myself in this. But it's this back and forth relationship. I I want to be here to help you. But man, you're kind of like, testing my nerves right now and 
you know, it might not be the healthiest. And so, so yeah, to see how Hannah advised her through that, how Kit advised her through that, it was almost like these flashback memories of conversations that I've had with wiser people that are saying, hey, it's not your job to fix this person's life. It's not your job to um, take all of their weight on your shoulders. And so that's a big way where I related. And then kind of what I mentioned about Jamie just kind of always being the the fallback, not the fallback for Ren even. She just kind of like, I mean, she is a big part of Ren's support system, but the fact that Ren is kind of keeping her on the outs and she wants to be more involved, but then she has so many other responsibilities to attend to and the patience that's involved with that, the long suffering, um, to see her frustration in those moments probably is where I saw myself in Jamie the most just mm-hmm. because you know typically as her character as a mom and as um somebody who's looking out for her daughter in this way I couldn't necessarily relate to in a big way in this book but through the, those long suffering moments or where I was like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I get you <laughs> yeah what about you so okay starting with Jamie Jamie um I felt for so much and just you see how these characters are just like missing each other, Mm -hmm. like just misreading the situation and each one of them has a justification for the way that they're acting and and just wanting the other one to like just get it. And she's trying not to react to the selfishness of her daughter who doesn't see herself in this moment as being selfish she Mm -hmm. sees herself as suffering for this friend that she's trying to help and point to jesus but every anyways for for jamie i appreciate so much how her character is painted as look i'm a pastor's wife and i care but like when i'm in that place where i have nothing emotionally charged left to give the world like when the congregants are coming in to like complain about something she's like nope not today i do not have capacity for this like of course you're gonna whine about that of course i'm like it's just so real (laughs) and you know and it's i i just i appreciate that but um for me like i mentioned it was so ren and casey um Mm -hmm. and the reason i think i react strongly to casey's character is like i said i've been there it was my pattern my entire BC, like before Christ stage of my life, like Mm -hmm. summer BC was Ren when it comes to like codependent relationships and trying to be like that big Mm -hmm. helper, that savior, that support system for people that were just toxic Mm -hmm. and sucking the life out of me, sucking the life out of the room and manipulation and gaslighting and like all of this stuff that I see from Casey, Mm -hmm. just that aggressiveness But then that like victim mentality, as soon as she tries to protect herself to where she feels like she needs to make these really poor decisions that she's trying to still justify as some way being even what God wants her to do, like moving in with him so that she can shine a light, Mm -hmm. you know, and you just want to like shake her. And but uh, but the reason I just want to shake her is because I, I see in her. 20 year old summer Mm -hmm. and and 15 year old summer when I would get grounded because one of my friends is making very idle self-destructive threats and like I, I probably knew it but it's like well just in case she's serious and I would run away from home and I would leave the house and I would get you know wow. and like my parents reacting much the way that like Kit and Jamie would of mm-hmm. like she's being so selfish she's not even apologizing and I, they just want to pull their hair out which then makes her feel like I definitely need to move they just don't understand me and it's just like she's <laughs> acting like a teenager yeah. she's acting like me as a teenager I guess so seeing Casey and how it's undoing a lot of what Ren has been working so hard mm-hmm. and he doesn't care what journey she's been on. He doesn't even ask. He doesn't care that she's trying to be healthy because he's not in a healthy place. Mm-hmm. And so just like worried for her and what this means for her and what this is going to mean for their relationship. But then also, I guess, seeing how as we came to the end of this week's reading, this change in Casey going from being like very defensive and antagonistic and Mm -hmm. all of that to this like deep almost hopeful sadness in him yeah where it's like you're seeing like the cry of his heart is to be forgiven Mm -hmm. is to be loved and accepted even though there's no way he can forgive love or accept himself 
And so, you know, there's there's hope in that. And so I really don't know. We're at a crossroads, I feel like, with his character. And uh, I'm going to hope for a positive outcome because I think we're at a place where it could go either way. I just so yeah. I know people I'm picturing. There's different <laughs> faces on Casey every time I read this of people I personally know. Oh. So it's just it's it's gotten a very to be a very emotional read for me in this last. Section. I mean, totally. I mean, especially when he's talking uh, in the chapel, you know, and talking about how everywhere he goes, Jesus is avoiding him, avoiding looking at yeah. him and the sense of disappointment that he feels. And Ren's like, I don't get that at all. Like, where yeah. are you seeing that from? You know, but just the understanding that, of course, he's projecting and he's um, feeling that for whatever reason, whether it's because it's something that is stemming from a lie inside of his head or it's something that's stemming from his upbringing in, you know, when you're behaving this way, Jesus doesn't love you. When you're behaving this way, you're disappointing him. Mm -hmm. And so he's feeling that in his core, which Ren is going, that's not true at all. You know, I mean, God, Jesus is a companion in our suffering. He's right there with us when life is the hardest. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it speaks a lot to Casey's character journey. And it makes a lot of sense, too, when you think back to earlier chapters when he's first arriving in Kingsbury and that first, you know, lunch meeting where he totally takes up all her time and he, you know, doesn't care about what she wants or where she needs to be. And he's coming at her with all these snarky comments and, you know, even just the way that he talks about how things ended with him and Brooke. And it's just so disheartening and sad and you do see that softness you know his mm -hmm. heart softening and uh, him really come to terms with how Jesus views him and how he views Jesus mm -hmm. and I think it's interesting that in many ways these characters are on the same journey in the sense that they both struggle with depression and anxiety and in, mm -hmm. in the, like this big and serious way and they've always been on this journey together but you see just how differently they are journeying now in the sense of like they it's almost like a different reaction to the same stimuli sure. and like how they see Jesus looking at. And so mm -hmm. we can look at the exact same thing, but our circumstances are going to dictate how we receive it. And so it's so hard because when you do have someone in your life who's looking at what you're looking at is, is considering the God that you know and love, mm -hmm. but is seeing him in such a different light, which is really more telling of themselves than of God. It's like, how do you help? How do you mm -hmm. love? How do you point them back in a way that's, not going to seem patronizing. That's not going to seem cliche. Like how? And so I really sympathize for Ren because she loves Casey, but he's dealing with something dark. I will say this is almost an aside. When he was showing this guilt, do you think he's honest about his relationship with Brooke? Like, do you feel like he was really escaping some abusive marriage from her? Okay. The way that she keeps jumping to like textbook abuse, I'm like, mm. yeah. You don't, I mean, she wants to give her, be her best friend the benefit of the doubt, right. but I'm like, and I can understand if she's the one that, you know, uh, was feeling a big push from Bruce, <laughs> Bruce, <laughs> from Brooke, when she was feeling a big push from Brooke in the beginning of their relationship of like cutting off, you know, Casey doesn't want to cut off communication, but Brooke says I have to, I can see how her mind would easily go there of like, oh, Okay, and then since they're so caught off, she has no idea what's happening. And so it could be easy. I mean, I understand why it's easy for her to make those jumps to, oh, that's classic textbook abuser. I think she wants it to be mm -hmm. to give, you know, but I also understand like, okay, you have this best friend who you talk to every, you, you FaceTime every, like we're married now. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't even have to be like, I think an abusive controlling thing to want there to be some boundaries. <laughs> well, and especially if Casey isn't, wasn't like bringing Brooke into the fold yeah. or like, you know, she, Ren didn't have that relationship with Brooke mm -hmm. because it all happened so fast. And, you know, they uh, were engaged so quickly and had this wedding immediately and all of these things. And then Ren couldn't even be there for the wedding. And so there's just this huge disconnect between like they don't Ren know and each Brooke. other at all. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so that, yeah, that just kind of adds to the, the tough situation. But yeah, just the, the way that he was describing it Mm -hmm. leads me to believe that he's exaggerating especially just with the yeah she's crazy I mean she was like throwing stuff at me and like whatever and it's just like 
Mm. Oh, and, and then the way he turns it around, like, oh, you, you know, you sound a lot like Brooke right now. Or are you going to treat me like you should be another Brooke? And I'm just, oh, that kind of manipulation just makes me want right? to joke. Yeah. I just, I think there's a lot more to that story. Yeah. Well, and a big lack of respect on Casey's part. And that's obvious. I honestly, when he got into the, when Casey showed up and they started talking, you know, and she's like, oh, this is dark, Casey. This is selfish, Casey. And she's making all these excuses for him. I'm like, what on earth about this makes her want to be friends with him? Their history. But I mean, that's, but that's the nature of the codependency is that if she were to try to walk away, he's going to turn on the sweetness. He's going to call her wrinkle and try to get her to come back. And I'm sorry, I'm just coming. I'm just so abused. And like, you know, it's just this whole thing. And that's where, again, I get fiery about Casey because I, a couple Christmases ago, I had to give myself the gift for Christmas of cutting off toxic relationships that I knew were longstanding. Yeah. And that was a hard place to come That's to. Tough. And so being on the other side, it's like, girl. Mm-hmm. But I, I am interested to hear what, to learn what we don't know. Because we only have one week left. Mm-hmm. I, so we got to wrap this up. We got like that much left. I, It's going to blow up. I yeah, I mean, I I don't know. It's I obviously call it a bummer book because it's literally like you're living a life of anxiety and depression mm-hmm. when you are reading through Ren's story and even Jamie's story. Jamie's story gives me more anxiety than Ren's story. I'll be perfectly honest. Like mm-hmm. I do struggle with anxiety and to hear the pressures of Jamie's life and the the lack of control that she has in Ren's life and the lack of control seemingly that's kind of happening at home. That's like Huh, makes my chest tight like that gives me more anxiety than you know hearing about Ren quitting her job and you know moving out of her apartment I'm like girl you gotta get healthy like I get it mm-hmm. uh, but um but yeah to me it's it's heavy it's a it's a heavy read and I, I kind of joke to my husband I shouldn't probably joke but I'm like just hoping for a happy ending <laughs> but we all know it's not going to be like a happy ending, yeah. You know, like we'll th- see. I mean, I, I mean, of course, we hope for what Ren could to be stay, the happy ending, like in a hell. Okay, so Ren could overcome all her inner demons and just find the true light, hope, and love of Jesus. Casey could. She's get already got sick. that, but I mean, like, hold on to it. That's the thing with me. That's yeah. where it was like. That's where my anxiety for Ren came is when Casey enters the picture and just threatens to topple it, mm-hmm. and that Casey finds Jesus, and that. But even like, I guess what I'm saying is like, even for like healing for Ren the best we can hope for is normalcy. You know, yeah. like this isn't a fairy tale yep. where it's like, oh, this night is going to sweep in and sweep her off her feet because Casey's obviously not that well, person. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, yeah, the like we were talking about, you know, we typically read books that are like more escapism and mm-hmm. more like, yeah. oh, it's a little unbelievable, but it's a beautiful story and it makes me feel good. And this is just not that story. She's going to struggle for the rest of her life. This is right. going to be the last time she's in this place. And mm-hmm. so, no, I mean, it is, but it's important because this is real life. This it's is what important. a lot of, uh, even our, we've been hearing from our listeners and our readers, like this mm-hmm. is what they're going through. I know. And I just, I, one week left to figure out how it's going to end. And I have Mm -hmm. a feeling this is not going to be tied up with a bow. Right. Because I don't think it can be. Right. So we're going to see. But (laughs) if you have not already subscribed for this podcast, again, we got one week. And then our final podcast where we're going to try to talk to the author and thank her for such a well-written bummer book. Um, (laughs) I don't think I can tell her. No. Oh, we're going to. I'm going to. I will. I'm going to say, guess what Candace said? (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. It's it's so. Stay tuned. It's such a bummer book because it's so well written. Like, I feel like you feel what they feel. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Podcasts, whatever. ConnectedLifeBookClub.com. You're going to get connected to how you can either join with us officially if you haven't. Subscribe for our podcast. Connect through Facebook and all of the things. Hope you're enjoying the journey. Well, and we want to see your photos. We want to know what you guys are talking about. Feel free to post questions about Mm -hmm. the book to post how you're feeling to um, post photos of your groups getting together anything we want to be as involved with you as possible so if you're not part of our Facebook group request to join that invitation will be sent to you when you sign up at connectedlifebookclub.com thank you for joining us this is week five next week is our last video podcast and we're excited to kind of wrap this up Mm -hmm. not necessarily with a bow but thank you so much for joining us